Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everybody, today we will be discussing a very important ultra high vacuum pump which is called cryo pump. Uh, in fact, cryo pump is the ultimate where every pump fails, cryo pump will st start working there because enormous pumping speeds and extremely low temperatures and pumping mechanisms are totally new compared to or unconventional weather compared to other pumps and it is a most modern technology is involved like cryogenic engineering okay and this cryo word is also very important because in deep space we have a lot of cryogenic conditions and in deep space we also have vacuum conditions that way 99.999% of the universe is under vacuum conditions and once you cross go into the deep space excessively cold temperatures are there only on earth we have the living conditions like 25 degree 30 degree nowadays it is 40 50 degrees but otherwise towards sun it is very hot side but other side it is going to be very cold so cryogenics and vacuum these are recently last 100 years they have developed but they are naturally available in and we are only trying to couple these cryogenics and vacuum in cryo pump. Normally vacuum pump is required to produce a thermally insulated atmosphere so that cryogenic conditions can be established. That is how vacuum technology helps cryogenic engineering. But in this cryo pump, it is reverse. Cryogenic technology helps vacuum technology. But of course, initially to produce cryogenic temperatures, you require thermal insulation and under that convection can be reduced only under vacuum conditions. So first vacuum, with that help we produce cryogenics and with those cryogenic conditions, we produce vacuum again, which cannot be produced by any other pump. So, cryo pump has got a lot of history behind it and a lot of stages are there in the developmental activity and today very very high quality cryo pumps are being manufactured and which are regularly being used in semiconductor industries and space technology, nuclear technology like that. Okay. In this course, we will be covering introduction of the cryo pumping. Construction of a typical cryo pump, there are varieties of cryo pumps I will show, but typical pump. Then we will also see the operating principles behind cryo pumping. Towards the end, we will see some applications, strategies, and advantages, and finally, some limitations. Okay. What is cryo pumping? So far, in the earlier pumps, we have seen positive displacement pumps like rotary, turbomolecular pump, etc. We have also seen in between one adsorption pump or gettering pump where the molecules are not taken out of the chamber, they are trapped by surfaces. If it is a physical adsorption, it is a physisorption pump. If it is a chemical adsorption, they are called gettering pumps and all. So, already we know the surface pumping phenomena earlier, but in cryo pumps, they are the only processes used where there is a condenser inside your vacuum chamber which is cooled to cryogenic temperatures. Cryogenic temperatures means minus 196 degrees liquid nitrogen, again minus 269 degrees with liquid helium. These technologies are well established. We have a cryogenic engineering center at IIT Kharagpur. Similar centers are there in all other IITs also, some part of the department, etc. So, cryogenic engineering is very well established 
cryogenic rocket engines most of you must have heard in india and uh, they are the last stage which has got huge thrust to lift uh, our satellites into geostationary etc anyway i am not going to cryogenics which is my main area but in cryo pumping we will have cryogenic condensers and those condensing surfaces are pumps they are sitting inside the pump they are only condensing the gases if condensation is not possible if the boiling point of those gases like helium etc are very small and uh, at that temperature under vacuum boiling point will further go down so if you are cooling a liquid helium cooled cryogenic panel inside a vacuum chamber and you want to pump or condense it is not possible under vacuum conditions so they can adsorb these gases so at cryo adsorption can enhance the pumping mechanism we will see all these things little later in detail so basically the definition of cryo pumping is where the gases are condensed onto the surface are adsorbed onto the surfaces thereby they are retained on the surface so that remaining space in the closed chamber will feel vacuum conditions but this is possible only if you evacuate the entire chamber to at least a thermal vacuum of 10 power minus 3 tar before we operate this cryogenic pumping surfaces because you cannot establish cryogenic temperatures in various panels inside vacuum unless you produce a thermal vacuum of 10 power minus 3 thermal insulation vacuum so we don't require any backing vacuum pumps continuously backing a cryogenic pump like a diffusion pump turbo pump we don't require here but we require a pre vacuum pump it pre evacuates keeps it ready close the wall isolate that main pump now cryo pump will start cryo pump starts means cool down starts cool down a surface then it will start condensing gases if their boiling points are above the condenser temperature if they are very nearer then condensation may not be possible and also it depends on sticking coefficient of the gases on the surface we will see all those concepts so adsorption and condensation at cryogenic panels which are housed inside a vacuum chamber after pre evacuating by a process another vacuum pump which is should be dry that should not be oily pump and it gets isolated there this cryogenic pump starts cooling it will not positively displace the molecules like other pumps they will straight away convert these gas molecules into liquids solids that means this nitrogen gas i can positively displace by turbo pump in cryo pump i will convert this nitrogen into liquid nitrogen or solid nitrogen it will be a part of the wall or a panel which is maintained at cryogenic temperature walls of the vacuum chamber will be room temperature but inside that vacuum created by pre evacuation at 10 power minus 3 tar a cryogenic panels will be there big big panels cooled by several mechanisms what are those mechanisms it can be a refrigerated cooled cryo pumps it can be a liquid cooled cryo pumps or it can be a continuous flow type of cryo pump means what here this is the most simpler pump pump it is nothing but a cryogenic container liquid helium container cryogenic temperatures minus 269 degree centigrade how to produce cryogenic things that is in another course we will see later now this annular space is a vacuum thermal vacuum for cryogenic temperatures to establish but you can put a small port here and connect it to any other vacuum system that will be also evacuated but you should not start from atmosphere so this is called liquid helium pool type cryo pump you can also circulate liquid helium onto a big copper block an extended surface inside your vacuum chamber through proper insulated lines and this whole surface will be maintained at cryogenic temperatures with the help of liquid helium circulation pump this is called continuous flow cryo pumps both these things are not that convenient nowadays since last 30 years a new technology called cryo refrigerated technology based on gifford mcmohan cycle is developed in fact the impetus for this technology has come from semiconductor industry 
semiconductor people want clean atmosphere not only minus 8 minus 10 10 power minus 8 10 power minus 9 ta. we also we also want very clean conditions oxygen free like that so they are they have encouraged in fact some of the cryogenic companies were supported by semiconducting companies in the initial days so like that cryo pumps have taken over other pumps as a high quality ultimate pumps but of course, turbomolecular pumps are also routinely being used in process applications. Okay. Every pump has got its own uh, speciality. We will see the selection criteria of various pumps in various levels in the last lecture of this production schedule, uh, where I will cover selection criteria. So, gases are not positively displaced, they are condensed or adsorbed. Okay. So, ultimate vacuum is very high and the conditions are very low temperatures and when these gas molecules are touching them, the interactions are van der Waal type of interactions, dispersive forces okay, is not like gathering which is a chemical thing which is there in ion pump which you have covered in the last class. So, it is basically fundamentally van der Waal dispersive forces on condensers having some adsorbing materials stuck to that, so that gases coming to that surface either be condensed or adsorbed. A combination of all these processes produce 10 power minus 10 minus 11, which is identical to a space vacuum, which is highly required in particle accelerators, which is very important in semiconductor manufacturing. So, how it looks like a typical construction? It contains various sub blocks, a pre evacuation pump which I have already explained with a roughing wall. So, the chamber which can be a semiconducting process chamber or it can be a nuclear chamber or it can be a safe space simulation chamber that is roughed by this line and valve is closed. Now, cryo pump through this main wall can be opened to this to produce further vacuum from 10 power minus 3 to 10 power minus 10. And this cryo pump contains an expansion device type thing connected to a compressor. Any refrigeration has got one compressor, one expander type, we call it evaporator type. Thing. But here, isothermal compression followed by adiabatic expansion or isentropic expansion, these two processes are utilized in producing very very low temperatures up to 10 Kelvin to act like a condensers or adsorbing agents thereby producing ultra high vacuum. Okay. And as I already told you, you require a 10 power minus 3 tar vacuum before we switch on this cryogenic operation. Switching on our cryogenic operation means switch on the compressor and uh, walls are open and closed. There is a cycle called Gifford McMahon cycle which is a very popular cycle I have given here and it is basically isothermal compression and uh, also isentropic expansion and in between there are regenerative heat exchangers. It is a involved technology, uh, if time permits later we will cover it, otherwise you can contact me, we will be able to give you very good materials on that. So, a typical construction of a cryo refrigerator pump will look like a small refrigerator basically and a chamber and a roughing wall and a roughing line and pre evacuation. But this pump also should be of high quality. You cannot simply produce 10 power minus 3 tar. This should be dry pump because if initial vacuum of minus 3 has got oiliness or something, even final vacuum will have some signature of this oily or water vapor or something which may not be acceptable in semiconductor industries. So, it is not only important to produce very good quality vacuum, the quant quantity vacuum, quality is also important. Quality with respect to a particular process, some processes do not want hydrogen, some processes do not want helium even, some processes do not want oxygen mainly, nitrogen for example or hydrocarbons because like uh, typical uh, analytical instruments, they do not want hydrocarbon contamination at 10 power minus 9 tar, they do not mind 10 power minus 8 tar with hydrocarbon because that signal from that will interfere with the other signals from your sample and your sample chemical composition will be read in a erroneous way. So, that way there are stringent requirements in high tech areas 
not only to have 10 power minus 9 minus 10 torr, but also have very clean atmosphere. So, the history of evacuation right from atmosphere is very important. So, the roughing pumps also should be dry pumps. You can use if it is very large chamber, then you can use claw pump or uh, screw pump. Otherwise, you can use dry membrane pumps or uh, typical scrawl pumps, etcetera, which are coming up in recently last 30, 40 years. They are being developed in a very high quality products in various companies. So, the operator of this fellow, this uh, cryogenic operation to produce high vacuum must be having knowledge of cryogenic side as well as vacuum side. Cryogenic side cool down of a condenser and vacuum side opening all the walls and the pre evacuation all those things. So, that pump down calculations also should be taken into account and how to make these cryo refrigerators all this is an involved technology with interdisciplinary ideas. So, uh, it is very interesting pump there are quite a good number of books and uh, articles available in internet you can see that and uh, in the process you will also start appreciating uh, cryo refrigeration knowledge ok. That way you will be benefited in cryo pumping st study both high vacuum ultra high vacuum required for most modern applications as well as cryogenic aspects ok. Continuing the operating principle now inside this cryo refrigerator I have not shown the compressor side because that is isothermal compression at room temperature there compression produces heating we remove the heat of compression here we are not bothered more than that. So, high pressure line low pressure line are bringing them to this expansion device. This particular device is now shown more in detail here. It is a closed device with high pressure helium which will not condense at those temperatures. So, it is working like a working gas with the valve assembly and connected to HP and LP lines from a compressor. They will produce second stage 10 Kelvin, first stage around 70 to 80 Kelvin. From here you extend a small cup type of structure which will act like a radiation shield to the second steel second stage and same first stage is also having a connection mechanical connection to a baffle called chevron baffle. So, that from the top the surface of the vacuum chamber to be evacuated whether it is a semiconductor chamber or anything or space simulation that room temperature surfaces or hot surfaces should not be exposed to cold. So, radiation heat radiation should not come here that is where this 45 degree angle Chevron has designed. So, that radiation is a straight line phenomena the radiation will not fall here the intermediate temperature around 80 Kelvin by anchoring it to the first stage will produce like a radiation shield towards the inlet size and from the chamber vacuum side chamber also is be kept within the vacuum chamber no it is not a positive displacement pump as I told you in the beginning it is only entrapment pump of the molecules in a another phase liquid phase or solid phase. So, that way this uh, cold conditions are preserved here and gases can condense here itself if their boiling points are of that temperature they need not travel to the second stage like water vapor and carbon dioxide can be condensed there itself and if they cannot be condensed like nitrogen, hydrogen, argon and helium type thing they will start entering into inner stage. From vacuum point of view this is all integrated up to the your chamber there will be some gate walls in between I am not showing. So, finally, those molecules which cannot be condensed in the first stage they will enter into the second stage depending on the sticking factor f there will be pumping speed per unit area I have given an equation. Of course, I am not going to cover in detail if you want Wikipedia cryo pumping if you go there you will get expressions for pumping speed which is proportional to area by putting charcoal or other things you are actually enhancing the effective area much larger that way condensation probabilities and adsorption probabilities for those gases which cannot be condensed also increases. With all this combination we will be able to produce a very good surface area using charcoal activated charcoal at very low temperatures like 1000 meter squares per gram you can have. That way increased surface area will have increased condenser area that way or adsorbing area. With these things 
cryo pumping surfaces which should not be exposed to room temperature so we have already taken care by the baffles and this way we can produce low temperature and very good pumping actions so this is a sort of cryogenic pumping fundamentals or operating principles and the expressions can be derived more in detail uh, following uh, kinetic theory etc if you want as an exercise later extending this uh, cryo pumps to very 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 large chamber like entire building type of chambers like i know i'll show you so this is the type of cryo pump largest cryo pump available this is the size of the man so such cryo pumps cooled with liquid helium are available to evacuate big big space simulation chambers where entire space shuttle will be there in the vacuum i shown i will show you separately there will be a section on space simulation technology using cryo pumps and turbo molecular pumps and various dry pumps etc that time we will concentrate on only space simulation using large cryo pumps right now only technology we are discussing okay when you want such large things one cryo refrigerator one baffle one stage of cryo refrigerator may not be enough so you can arrange several cryogenic surfaces this is a schematic diagram i have given so these are arrays of cryo refrigerators this red color is first second first stage of cryo refrigerator type this will be 10 to 10 20 kelvin type if it is a refrigerator cooled or you can also cool it with liquid helium that way very low temperature 4 to 10 k surfaces are blue and uh, this red color things are around 80 kelvin which are acting like radiation shields from both sides and the outermost chamber is the vacuum chamber okay so this sort of very large chambers require several such condensers condensers are this blue color things so one shield one condenser and one common backing shield that type of arrangement is known as cryo pumping array and that will be very large uhv chambers when you want to evacuate we have to use them and this is the most modern technology where lot of manpower is required that way whoever wants to read this uh, cryo pumping more in detail i can personally feel as a teacher you can give startups you can also get lots of employment potential in uh, nuclear industries space industries because they definitely require ultra high vacuum technology and uh, cryogenic engineering okay so they are fully aware of these technologies so if you say that i have mechanical engineering i have electrical engineering i know most of the engineering science physics but i can also have skills in vacuum technology and cryogenic technology then your potential increases so cryo pumping is large scale arrays is an extremely useful uh, technology for future space missions and nuclear missions which are very important for any country okay so this is a type of model i just wanted to give because nowadays everybody wants to have some modeling so you can model these things these are three is nothing but a series of shields the series of condensers this is a back shield this is a room temperature vacuum shield that means a small cut view of a one particular place and one is the radiation thermal radiation two is the mass flow the gas flow which can bend that's why i given wavy nature so that how heat transfer point of view you can do some modeling and calculations and uh, the real mass trans i should not say mass trans in a strict sense the gas flow into the condensers that also you can calculate because the probability we are already under high vacuum conditions 10 power minus 4 so molecules when they touch here mean free path is quite large compared to the gaps here and gaps have to be created otherwise heat transfer will be more so there is a competition between heat transfer and gas flow so there are lots of optimization techniques when you are using very large scale uhv chambers and even if it comes the other side that means there is a finite probability for it to come outside uh, there is a probability that it may not go it may come back so you have to have several probabilities finally solve all those equations simultaneously 
to produce net amount of gas flow which is irreversibly trapped onto the condensers so that you will get the ultimate vacuum required vacuum into the actual application chamber okay so this is my condenser and even if molecule comes here it may stick it may touch it may stick it may not stick that probability also you should take and if it misses this gap into these gaps and it it may touch this and again come back here so so many varieties of uh, things you need to paths of this uh, gas molecules they are not ions here we are not bothered about ionization molecules are condensed molecules are not uh, positively displaced these gas molecules have become solid molecules it is as good like a stainless steel chamber so all that because of lack of time i will not go into intricate details of this modeling but this is a very important uh, area and where how we do we arrange front end radiation shield actual condensers back ends and vacuum chambers how do you maximize the pumping capacity of the arrays and very ultra high vacuum conditions exactly relevant to particle accelerators as well as space simulation chambers this is a very challenging task i would say that's why i am covering this cryo pumping towards the last because it's not it's last but not the least because it contains two important technologies cryogenic and vacuum technologies and these are ultimate vacuum pumps they can produce in principle 10 power minus 11 10 power minus 12 torr so with this idea when you can add cryogenic conditions to cool various condensers on that you put some charcoal or some adsorbing material and uh, see to that uh, thermal radiation is not falling on to these cryogenic con uh, conditions then utilize them to suck i don't say suck because it is a molecular flow because already pre evacuation is done by 10 power minus 3 torr by another pump and this way you will get very good high pumping speed of the order of thousands of liters per second under high vacuum conditions that's why they are extremely useful in semiconductor industries liquid crystal displays storage this mass production of i uh, glass industries coatings and very extra large chambers for space simulation applications and nuclear particle acceleration applications the advantages are no moving parts like piston or cylinder or anything and they can be oriented in any direction that way and they are having four key advantages compared to other ultra high vacuum pumps no risk of oil contamination like diffusion pump overall pumping speed is very high 60000 liters type thing very low running cost once initially purchase a cryo refrigerator and maintain properly with your combined knowledge of cryo refrigerators and vacuum pumps and your design capabilities then very high pumping speeds for water vapor and light gas this is a nuisance in semiconductor industries you are getting very good vacuum at 10 power minus 7 tar entire 10 power minus 7 tar is mostly because of water vapor why water vapor was condensing sticking to the surface so much it is unable to come back easily it's a polar molecule compared to hydrogen or nitrogen or oxygen that's why when you look at the residual gas analysis of any pumped surfaces you will inevitably find it is totally containing moisture at atmospheric pressure 70% 75% is nitrogen 20% oxygen third price goes to argon 1% and uh, depending on the relative humidity or if you remove with uh, air blast in rotary pump etc you can reduce water vapor also to 0.1% at higher pressures around 100 millibar or something but when you come to 10 power minus 9 tar etc if 10 power minus 9 tar is 100% you will find 70 80% is water vapor only most of the other gases would have been removed over the history of evacuation so it has become a nuisance because that is interfering with your semiconductor uh, contamination so it has become a big problem that's why semiconductor industry people to produce very large vlss very large scale integration chip manufacturing people and all and very high quality chip manufacturers they have sponsored this cryogenic cryo refrigerator type cryo pumps and today this coordination has worked very nicely and that way commercial cryo pumps are available but there will be some limitations it requires some basic knowledge of cryogenic engineering pumps cannot be continuously running ah this is one very important unlike positive displacement turbo molecular pumps because they have come they have gone 
But cryogenic containers, after some time, lot of layers are formed, condenser, it gets saturated. Pumping will be difficult. Just like we change charcoal after 4 5 months in our water filters at home because it got saturated, adsorption mechanism. Condensations also, lot of thick layers are formed. Then heat transfer will not take properly. Condensation also requires heat removal. On one side, there will be a lot of heat coming from various sources. If that dominates compared to the cooling, then we will not have pumping action. So, at that time, what I should do? Stop it or use another cryo pump parallelly and regenerate it. Regenerate means heat it so that all the solid uh, solidified or condensed things or adsorbed gases will come out. So, regeneration is just to switch off and bring it to room temperature, natural regeneration. If required, you may have to drive water vapor by a little lukewarm, warming up with the heating elements. So, that and all you have to do as a routine maintenance. You use for 10 hours and uh, if it is 10 power minus 8 minus 9 without leakage, then it will be working for 10 hours. If it is a leak or something outgassing, it may work for 4 hours. So, you will have to be ready with other parallel pumps and isolate this pump and start repairing it by that is called regenerating it. It is nothing but removal of earlier adsorbed condenser gases by heating it up. So, with all these things, it comes like a limitation, but actually it is a basic mechanism of desorption, adsorption, desorption. When you adsorb for vacuum production, it is your duty to desorb it, but during that time, the desorbed gases should not be exposed to again vacuum. There should be valving and it should be related to another route somewhere into some medium vacuum chamber. All that precautions have to be seen. We will see again when we go to the systems design or applications. At that time, we will come back to all these components together, how they are arranged, how the various regenerations are going on, scheduling of these pumps in various applications for semiconductor industries, space industries, nuclear industries. We will see all that later. So, with this idea of cryo pumping, we have come to the end of the production of vacuum. And next, the last class of production is we will try to cover selection criteria. There is nothing uh, strict rule about it, but I will give out of my experience uh, some tips of selecting pumps. So, uh, I am sure we are slowly cooling down to cryo pumping now and which is the ultimate vacuum pump for ultra high vacuum applications. Thank you very much.